serious person hat. All right. I don't know how long that'll last. Seriousness doesn't last a lot. So it's a summer research info session. So I'm happy to share with you what I've learned over the years working here at San Diego State. I've actually been on the campus for 27 years, probably longer than most of you have been born. <coughs> but <laughs> I've worked with STEM students the whole time, helping them apply, find research programs, find a right fit. So I'm just going to talk about what are they really kind of, what's the process to apply and what to expect when you're uh, participating in one. And I'm gonna make some, a few comments about the pictures on the sides of my slides. So on this slide, you see Mireille Lee. So she did her first summer experience at UCLA. She was a bi biology major at San Diego State and she's currently um, pursuing her PhD at the University of Chicago and I believe it's microbiology. So I love it. And this was actually a photo in the lab on campus. When she, ooh, she worked in Dr. Foyer's lab uh, it's a while ago, so I mean, I remember. All right, ooh, I'm gonna have to move my little people's faces on the side because I can't see all my words. All right, so what is really a summer research program, a summer research experience, a summer internship or an internship experience? Because some people you'll hear about summer research, you'll hear, oh, you did an REU, and you're like, REU, what is that? That's a research experience for undergraduates. So really what is meant by these summer research programs is this intensive eight to 12 weeks, depending on the program. I've seen some that are also even as short as five weeks um, of intensive research training because really the bulk of your time is spent doing research in a research lab at another institution or somewhere else versus typically your home institution. We will talk about opportunities to do summer research at San Diego State later on in the slides, but um, this is more about going someplace else and getting that research experience where you're spending, you know, eight to 12 weeks, about 40 hours a week in the lab. It's where you get a, a you know, lots of training, lots of experience. Um, some, some people ask me, well, what level do you have to be for these research experience? They have some that are meant for students after their freshman year. There are some meant for graduating students who are about to apply to graduate school and, and it's all levels. It depends on the research experience. There's actually some high school summer research opportunities also. Um, there are some meant for students with research experience already and there's some meant for no, no research experience. They wanna introduce what is research to them. So as I mentioned, it really depends. Um, I did say it is uh, eight to 12 weeks you're typically working, there's a faculty mentor who runs, the, who's the head of the lab. It's their research project, it's their baby, it's, it's all theirs. And then graduate students and undergrads in the lab. So depending on the program, you may work more with a graduate student or you may work more with your faculty mentor. What's great about them, the majority of them, I'll say 95% are paid. They pay your travel to go to the institution, wherever it may be. They pay for your housing while you're there and then they pay you a stipend. So it's like a, it's like a job, but the reason they call it as a stipend, it's like non-taxable. So when they say it's $5,000 for the summer, you don't get 5,000 minus 377 FICA and all that stuff. Um, Thelma, real quick, I think we're seeing a different screen. Oh, no. I think it's, um, are you on presenter view by any chance or? No. Oh, oh I, I think, yeah, I, we're just seeing the first um, PowerPoint slide. That was the uh, opening. Ooh. It's okay. No, it's on it's on presenter, so you don't see. Okay, let's try I this. think we might be on the wrong. Uh, okay, and so it's not moving? No, it's not. Yeah, now I'm seeing the page that says steps to apply, but it's not in like presentation view. Okay, well, let's go back. After all that greatness, man. Okay, okay. let's try this. Uh, Did let's... you click the? Yeah, I clicked the little thing so it doesn't pop up. Nope, it doesn't. Interesting. Someone, you might be sharing strictly this window and not your screen. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, so uh, you. you might be sharing specifically this window, and so when it pops up, okay. Let me try that again then. Well, I'm glad you said something. I was just talking away like I was all like I was a ish, you know, like oh look at all that I know. All right, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, also for everyone here, um, I will be sending you guys like this recording if you want it, as well as the slides after. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, all right, let's try it again. Share screen. This one. Oh, so should I be sharing then my desktop? 
No, right? Um, I think so. If I put it in the so it should be like screen one or desktop. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now you're going to sing all oh. my stuff. All right. That's all right. Let's try this. <laughs> and this is all the recording. Hello, my fans. Okay. So now you see my desktop, right? Yes, I do. I mess with all my emails and everything. All right. Were we good? Yes, now we are good. Are we on this one? Do you see a big yes. thing? All right. Do you see my picture of Jason Momoa on the side? <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> All right. So this is kind of what I spoke about. And Vinny said she's going to provide you with the slides. So I don't want to go all over this again. But basically, this is what I talked about. What kind of creates the summer experience? Like, what is it? Um, besides the research that you're doing, you're also probably being exposed to some sort of seminars, lectures. They used to have GRE prep. GREs are on hold now, but I'm assuming when we go back to regular in-person, they'll make they'll torture students who want to go to graduate school and make them take the GRE again. Um, just my little comment that is not anything SDSU is saying, only Thelma Chavez. <laughs> and then typically at the end, you do some sort of research presentation at the end of the summer program. Everybody in the program um, does one. And the number of students and programs ranges from 10 to sometimes 50 or 75 students at that same summer program. And the, I think the one of the best things about doing these experiences outside of your of, of SDSU or whatever campus you're on is that you're establishing a network outside of SDSU. So whether you're applying to medical school or graduate school or even a job, you have a reference of someone outside of your home campus that can say, this person is great at research. They you know, worked hard for eight to 12 weeks. So you have another letter of recommendation. So really, how do you apply? How do you find these summer research programs? Where do you start looking? So there's lots of places. I always do the same joke. Like when I, I went to, uh, <clears throat> oh, I almost choked on that, UCSD <laughs> so many years ago, there was no internet. So we had to like look for flyers posted around. You can now either go to the internet and just Google summer research in math at Stanford. Do they have a program that'll pop up if they do or whatever. And then there are these other sites. Uh, the NSF Research Experience for Undergraduates is a wonderful site. If um, I think I can click on it and it'll show you since I'm sharing my screen. I hope this doesn't mess anything up. Um, did it pop up on the side kind of to kind of see NSF? So it's a site where you can, oh, sorry, thank you. It's a site where you can click and search by like your interest. Are you a math major? Are you computer science? Are you biology? Are you psychology? Are you engineering? Um, it's a great site to be able to do that. Um, in addition, the program that I am a coordinator within, the CASA, the Center for the Advancement in Students in Academia, we try to each year create this um, or update this Google Doc. So when, I, when it comes up, it's, it's, it's pretty ugly, but it's just kind of like a database Google Doc. Okay, it's a spreadsheet, but if you go here and you click on it, it'll look a little different from what like I see. But what's great about it, it has tabs on the bottom. So these are all the STEM experiences. You could go by biology. If you're looking for health professional ones, they're here. Right now, this is all information from last summer. So it gets updated as we get updated information. So I definitely recommend you um, go back to that and check it out. Um, let's see, what's the last? Oh, and then I talked about, there's some students who uh, can't travel over the summer or can't you know leave home either they take care of a family or they also have to take classes something like that so they want and and look for opportunities at san diego state we do have some opportunities at san diego state whether it's through the undergraduate research grant that we have or there's some some of our own faculty have reus and if you hear snoring it's not me it's my chihuahua she's like 11 year olds but she snores like like a big 50 year old man i mean she's so loud she's right here that's why so it's not me because you see i'm awake so i'm not snoring usually <laughs> um but so at san diego state there's some there's like we have reus in math i think there's one in astronomy there's one in engineering there's a couple so that you can apply and stay at san diego state for the summer if you're not able to we also have local ones like at ucsd that are within the area um Definitely when you apply, you'll probably hear from the panel, you wanna to apply to a couple because these are very competitive. When there's 50 slots, maybe 500 people apply to them. When there's 10 slots, maybe 500 people apply to them. So I don't say that to deter you. I just say that to apply. The only thing it's gonna cost you is your time and time of whoever's writing your letters because there's no application fee to apply to summer research, which I think is great. Um, 
a great tip that started when a long time ago, a student told me when I said, oh, what does your list look like? Where are you applying? What are you giving to your letter writers? Create a spreadsheet, list all the schools you're interested in applying to, why you're applying, what kind of mentors are there? What kind of research can you do? When are they due? Stuff like that. They typically, summer research applications, internships applications, especially if they're for the federal government, those are due way early. We already had one, I think it was the, what is that one? It was with NAV, NYWIC, Spay War, we used to be Spay War. It was due like November 1st, it's already past due. So internships, those are sometimes earlier because you're working in industry or if you're going for the government, you got to get that um, clearance, which takes a long time. But typically for summer research programs that are at, in, hosted by institutions, they're usually like late December, could be January, some go all the way to March, but it's rare. I say, use your winter break to research them and apply because then when school starts by January 22nd, you've already got that done and you don't have to worry about that. But you always wanna check web websites for that info. Let me take a little break and a breather because I talk really fast and see if there's a question about anything I covered real quick up to this point. I only have a couple of slides because I really want to save the time for those students who participated in summer research. We have a great panel of students who are going to share their experience. And then if you have a question, um, please put in the chat. Benny's going to monitor that. So what are some of the requirements when you're applying, right? Um, yeah, personal statement. They always talk about, you know, STEM majors. Oh, they hate writing. Well, oh. Oh Sorry, that background noise is my son making his daily smoothie, always the same time, so I apologize. Um, personal statement. So you really should, as a STEM student or as any, as a college student, have a personal statement because you use it to apply for scholarships. If you're gonna go to graduate school or medical school, anything, ask for a personal, or you're applying for an award on campus, they're gonna ask about you. So just start writing up anything one to two pages, start early and then have people look at it and adapt it because you can change it from some of you, if you applied to other schools rather uh, in addition to San Diego State that required essays for college, take that, start with that and adapt it. Now include everything you've done in college. You have something, it's starting that's really hard. When you have a blank paper, that's really scary. But if you have something to start with, you could just adapt it. And please, please, please have someone proofread it. Someone who, someone, Based, it's really great to have someone who doesn't know you read it because if they're trying to learn about you, because if anything's missing or there are holes, they could say, well, you started talking about this and then you skip to this. But if you give it to me, like say, Ryan gives me something, I kind of know his path. So if he leaves something out, I already know that. And in my mind, I'm reading it, but he never put it on the paper. So it's good for someone who doesn't know you to read it also. Um, Depending on the program, if they want to know if you already have research experience, you can talk about it. But what's really important, these programs want to know why they're program. They're smart. They know you're applying to other ones. It's not just them. They want to know they're not getting this cookie cutter personal statement. Why do you, why that school? Who do you want to work with? Why? How's it going to help you in your career? You know, like, why do you want to do some research? Just like, ooh, I'm going to get $5,000. I'm going to do some research and, you know, I'm done. Do you want to go to graduate school? Do you want to come back and do research on your campus? These things are important. Um, do you have any relevant academic work or work experience? So those could be for internships or for research. What's important, I think they're looking for, because some students worry, well, I don't have any research experience. Maybe they won't want me. But in your classes, you do all, you know, you've had OCHEM. You know, if you've overcome that, I think you could basically do anything because that's really scary in, in my opinion. But sometimes there's things you have to adapt your experience to show them that you're a hard worker. Um, this is why you're interested. Um, put your goals in there. Letters of recommendation. I'll let the panel address this, but I always say sometimes it's two, sometimes it's one, but always have at least three people you can ask who will write one because sometimes someone will say, I'm sorry, I can't this week or, um, I don't have enough time or something like that, but it's always good to have backups. They'll ask for transcripts. Typically they take an unofficial transcript when you apply, so that's not too bad. And then have your resume or CV ready. A lot of times they don't require it, but it's good to have it ready. And raise the uh, CV. Does everybody know what a CV is? I can't see hands, so I was gonna say raise your hand. But basically CV is like your academic resume. It can be longer. Resumes are usually like one page. When you're going to a career fair, all that recruiter wants to see is one page and 
get everything on it. With your CV, if you look at one of your professor's CVs, it's like eight to 12 pages because it talks about everything you've done in academia. Once again, I always wanna stress, check the websites for requirements because they may vary. Some programs ask for a scientific paper example for some reason, because they wanna see if you've written it. Who knows? Um, all right, questions on that? I just put in here a sample recruitment. I asked for questions that I don't even pause. I'm the worst. Any questions? No, okay, thanks. <laughs> This is just a sample one from last year. It says, you know, yeah, what, sorry, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes. Um, so if I'm like a freshman and I might be going on campus next semester, is it necessary to start doing like research in this stuff right away? Or like if I do a research sophomore year instead, because there's more of a chance of it being in person, would that affect me getting into grad school? It will. I mean, if you have the opportunity to do it right away, I say, you know, go for it. But if, if say you want to do you want to take some classes this summer to get ahead that way or you want to do study abroad if they offer that again so you have to think about what your plan is what what summer will you have time to do it i've always get students who say i'll just wait till between my junior and senior year and then something happens and they don't get to apply and they've lost their chance so i think the panelists can address it i think we have some who did one their very first summer between their freshman and sophomore year and have some who did their first one between their junior and senior year so it, it kind of depends but it's, it's never too late. You don't have to do anything. I always want to stress that because sometimes it's stressful. It's like, no, not this summer. And, you know, because of COVID, I didn't get to really do anything. Um, so. Thank you. Good question. You're welcome. By the way, what was your major? Is it? Oh, oh. I'm a psychology major. Oh, okay, great. How do you say your name? Irvi. Irvi. I love that. Thank okay. you. All right. Um, so this is basically in the email. So they'll send a lot of emails. Those of you who may be in a CASA program and we forward these summer recruitment emails to you, you'll see, they'll say, oh, we're excited about our program. So you see this deadline last year was February, February 3rd. Always note what time. See, this says Eastern Standard Time. So that's noon, which means 9 a.m. for us in California. So you gotta uh, pay attention to that because some of these sites shut down and you can't submit anything once the deadline. There's always links. Um, so we get these a lot, we forward them, they talk about what they're looking for. The next slide, I think, is an actual flyer that we would get from one of our partners at uh, University of Texas at Southwestern. They have tons of programs, but what I love about this, on this you could see, look at all the different majors that, or the areas they're interested in. Biological chemistry, there's cancer, there's uh, microbiology, there's neuroscience, there's pharma, stem cell research, like there's everything. Because some programs you have to kind of pay attention like, oh, this is specifically for biology majors, or this is only for civil engineering or environmental engineering. So this is one that kind of is very interdisciplinary. And they have like five different summer REUs that you could apply to through one application, which I think is great. Did you have a question? Okay, sorry, my youngest. <laughs> um, and this one, look, it says, it tells you when the program's gonna be, June 7th to August 13th. It pays you $4,000 for 10 weeks. Now I'm trying to, due date, February 1st, 2021. They are planning for in-person, but they do talk about what, it's not gonna be canceled if it doesn't happen to be in-person, depending on where we are. Um, it will turn virtual. And then some of our panelists can talk, talk to you about what they did virtual, but this past year, 2020, a lot of them just got canceled because it was all in the middle and there was no turnaround time. So next year, I think a lot of the schools are like, we're, we're trying for in-person, we're really doing that, but if not, it'll be virtual. So you, it's just not stopped. With that, so I think this is my last slide for you to panel. Congrats, you're accepted, you get the letter. Yay, I'm going. What does it mean? The amount of time, they talk to you about the funding and the travel. They set up your airfare typically so that you don't have to pay anything up front. Sometimes you live in really nice places. I've had students live in dorms that or frat houses that, you know, that nothing's wrong with frat houses. I'm an advisor for a sorority, but sometimes it's not as clean as like a hotel, but if you're just there for the summer, you're a college student, but some are really great too. So it depends. You got to, uh, be also very open to sometimes you're given a project and it's very independent and other times you have people you're just always working with. So each, each program's different. Um, there may or may not be GRE prep. You get to network what is great about not only 
people from that institution, but students who came from other institutions across the United States or sometimes internationally. So I think that's really cool. So you are like getting diverse ideas from just various areas. I wish I had You're this opportunity. Zero girl. Oh my gosh, that's my phone. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Um, let me turn this down. Um, they want you to come with the eagerness to learn anything. Maybe they said it was this, but they're, now you're going to learn this computer program and be like, oh, this is not. What, you just got to want to learn what they're providing you. And then typically there's an end of the summer presentation. Even the virtual uh, programs this past summer had them, which I thought was really cool. Oh, I forgot to mention in this photo, I think I passed the other photo. This is Altera. She did summer research at the University of Maryland College Park, and that's where she also ended up her graduate school. So she was an undergrad in biology at San Diego State. She went to check out the school and spend a summer to see if that's where she could really spend her graduate you know, five years in a PhD program. And she loved it. So it was a great experience. She made connections and she had letters from some the school she wanted to go to from a faculty at that school. So it's a great way to explore schools also. And with that, I just threw in some pictures of students at different universities across the United States. Um, Purdue, Vanderbilt University, that was Berkeley, uh, Mayo Clinic, engineering at Colorado Boulder, I think this is University of Wisconsin, Madison, and then Seattle, Washington. So all there's places, all, there's international ones too. I didn't talk about that, but just because I'm not sure what's gonna happen over the summer, but there is also international research programs that are available. And with that, if there's any last, not last questions, I'll be here to the end, but oh, thank you, I love applause. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing that my screen. This is Carlos. Carlos is also, he was here in chemistry or biochemistry and he, where did he go in the summer? He did two summers, one at UT Southwestern and that one at UCSF and he's at UCSF doing his PhD there. Um, all right, oops, oh no, escape. Where am I at? Okay, I'm not sharing anymore, right? <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> I feel like one of those presenters that I laugh at all the time. All right, because they don't know what's going on. So, sorry, is there any questions before I have our panel go? And then everybody in the panel, did you have the questions um, that I sent or put in the chat either way? All right, so the way this is gonna work with our panel, we're gonna start off everybody and I'll call you by name so that everybody's not talking at once. Um, first, I'd like you to say your name, your major, the year you're at the SDSU and why you chose to apply for summer research and or internship. So they kind of get an idea. And we will start, I'm going by who's on my screen. So no hard feelings. At the top, we have Lexi. I'm so glad that the questions are written out because as soon as you said my name, I forgot all of them. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Lexi Strom. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a senior cell and molecular biology major here. And I chose to apply for summer research programs because I actually switched disciplines. Um, I started working in a marine microbiology lab, decided that was the last thing I wanted to do with my life and then switched to biochemistry. Um, so in order to be competitive for grad school and try to convince these selection committees that I was serious about biochemistry. Um, I looked for a biochemistry summer internship. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Nicole. Hello everyone, my name is Nicole hurtado Saban. I also go by she, her, hers. Um, I am a civil engineering major and I'm at my junior year at SDSU and I've actually done two different experiences. So the first one was my freshman year. Um, I just wanted to explore kind of what research was. I wasn't sure if I was interested in it at all. And my second one was this year uh, and an internship um, with a private company. So, and that was virtual. So kind of very various different experiences that I'll talk about later. Thank you. Birthday boy, Ryan. Hi. Oh, there we go. Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm a fourth year psychology major at SDSU, and I applied to summer research because I'm really interested in going to neuroscience, and I wanted to try out other types of neuroscience research that uh, really isn't offered at San Diego State, and also try and look at the schools that I'm interested in applying this fall for grad school. 
Thank you, Chris. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Chris. My pronouns are he, him. And I am a senior mechanical engineer student um, wrapping up and I've had two summer research experiences. So my first one was a little bit more kind of normal, traveled out, went to New York. And then uh, my second one was a virtual one. And my first one, I kind of went in with it, uh, with the mentality of like, is research kind of what I want to do? I was kind of tossed between uh, industry and research. And having that experience, it was really kind of something for me to, to fully dive in and actually get a, a taste of what research is. And it stuck with me. Um, I'm still kind of committing to it. I did a second one um, where it was virtual and yeah, still loving research, which is good. Thank you. And last but not least, Kara. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kara. I go by she or hers pronouns. I am a fourth year physics major. Um, my first summer research experience was this past summer, and I did a virtual program. And I, like, within the first couple of years of college, I realized I wanted to go to grad school. And so I knew that uh, getting as much research experience as possible would put me in a really good spot to be able to apply and be competitive for grad school. Awesome. Thank you. We're going to go over a couple more questions. If possible, those of you in the audience, if you could maybe just put in the chat like what your major is so we can get an idea of what majors we have out there, that would be great for our panel to know too because they can address certain things also. With that, um, I'll go on a, I'm gonna like put a couple of questions together so that they're not boom, boom, boom. Um, like how did you find these programs that you applied for? Um, what was the process like and how, who did you ask for letters? How did you get the people to write your letters? And let's go backwards. Let's start with Kara. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna pull up where you had sent us the questions. So I, don't forget <laughs> I, threw you, I threw you off, huh? Lexi was already. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So the main way I found programs was through the NSF uh, website that Thelma showed you guys earlier. They have a huge um, page just full of physics REUs. I did look into a couple of ones outside of that at campuses that I was specifically interested that I didn't see on that page. Uh, and so there are REUs outside of that specific website, but that's a huge resource that I used. Um, I think I ended up applying for seven. So I applied for quite a few uh, and I ended up getting two acceptances. Uh, the application for in terms of letters of rec, I got two letters of recommendation, one from a professor that I'd already started doing some research with at San Diego State, and the other one was a professor who I regard as a mentor, and we have had several meetings regarding career planning and all of that. And so they were my letter of rec writers. Um, did I cover everything? Is that most of it? Okay. Yeah. Great. And I meant for the panel. So if you have something like if it was like you did the same exact thing, so I need to repeat that, but something, please share your experience. And then if, especially if you have something different to add, please let because so we all know you have a different process too. Sorry, next up, I didn't even say is Chris. Uh, just want to shout out Ryan uh, for another, Ryan Recto for being another engineer. Um, so um, backtrack, uh, how did I find out about the programs? Um, the link that Thelma actually went through in the beginning, that's a kind of at the end of the CASA emails, actually was how I found the NYU uh, REU. I, like I said, I was kind of on the toss up of like, am I gonna do industry, am I gonna do research? I applied to summer internships and summer programs, uh, summer research programs, and I was kind of like, like whatever hits, hits. Uh, I applied to three schools for a research program and I only got accepted to one. And that kind of like, that was where I was accepted and I was like, sweet, I get to travel. And I kind of went with that. And kind of the process behind that was um, for the first time around is I got the information and I kind of looked at the database that Thelma had and uh, reached out to my letter writers. My bad, I'm kind of all over the place. Letter writers, kind of like the, the I'm like oh gosh my brain is so like easily distracted I have like the chat up I'm sorry guys um 
So to get my letter writers, I, I'm a part of a few organizations and one of them, I had an executive position and was like really in close contact with the advisor who was helping us run the organization. So just kind of my involvement, they knew my work ethic and they were able to kind of at least chime in and say, I, I can vouch for Chris. Um, another one was a professor who I spent a good amount of time with. And my first application, I mean, it was, it was kind of rough. I had no research experiences, but I had people who were kind of going to vouch for me. And I had kind of mapped out and, and penned out my personal statement and kind of applied to as many as I could at the time. Um, and then the second time I kind of had like the, the system down and I was able to apply, I think I applied to like 10. I had uh, other letter writers that I could reach out to. Um, my NYU uh, professor that I worked with, other people that I met on campus, and I started to kind of create a better application. But it was kind of a progression. Like I started with nothing and kind of used what I could and, and applied where I could. Hopefully that that was helpful. Great, and that's a great uh, way to also um, confirm my words aren't coming. Remember, I went to UCSD, so I'm not as smart as you guys. Um, to apply to try to do it early. So if one year you go somewhere like, oh, that's not really what I want to do, you can apply again the next year and get a letter of rec from someone you spent the summer, the previous summer before too. So it could be sophomore to junior year and junior to senior year, or it could be freshman. Um, let's go next to Ryan. Sorry, I always have trouble. I don't know why clicking the mute button, I have to click five times before it works. <laughs> But um, how I found programs is a lot like how everyone else said. Um, I also went on to, I looked at uh, graduate schools I was interested in and under their programs, see if they offered any summer research opportunities there. Like I looked at um, University of Michigan's neuroscience program and they offer like two neuroscience related summer programs and I applied to both um, this past year. Um, in terms of letters of recommendation, I asked my, I was already in research by at that point when I applied. So I asked my uh, PI as well as uh, a professor for those who are in psych, uh, my Sci 410 professor, Dr. Cronin, she, it was a very like research intensive class. And I really got to know her like as the semester went on and uh, she's provided me many letters of rec since that class. <laughs> Uh, both when I first applied between like sophomore and junior year and between junior and senior year, and even now in graduate school. Um, was that it? I forgot. Uh, I, I think you hit them all. I wanted to make note to something Chris said that I think was important. One of his letters was he was in a student org and the advisor. The advisor may, not, may or may not have been faculty. So if you worked on campus for a year under someone, that's also a strong letter because they mentioned they talk about your work ethic and what type of person you are. So keep that in mind because I know many of you probably aren't in research at this time. Um, Nicole? Yeah, so I also found my, uh, my first RU, which was at UCSD, which I didn't mention before, but um, I also found it through the spreadsheet that Thelma shared out. And so for me, I think it was mostly the letter recommendation process that was a little bit different since I was a freshman. So I hadn't really gotten involved in many orgs. I was still kind of looking around seeing uh, what I wanted to be involved with. So I actually reached out to um, Thelma actually and um, another program director, Natasha from Mesa. And I'm also in CSU LSAMP, which is why, how I know Thelma um, from my freshman year and ask them if they could write my letters of recommendation. So I would say if you're a freshman, make sure to go to like your office hours and talk to your professors and make sure that you kind of establish that um, bond with them so that if you ask for a letter of recommendation, they're not like, oh, who is this person? I, I don't even know what their work ethic is or stuff like that. So I would, I would suggest doing something like that. Um, and I think, what were the other questions? I am blanking. Um, um, one, I was going to ask, how was that different from when you applied for the internship, which was just oh, yeah. last year? Yeah, so the internship by then I had already kind of done some more orgs and um, I think, I don't remember if they asked me for, might have just asked me for a letter of reference or not a letter of reference, like references to um, call to if, if necessary. So. I remember I had gotten a job by then, so I asked my boss if she could be a reference, and I forget if there was more than one um, 
other reference, but yes, usually with industry, it's asked for references, not, not always recommendations, though some might, um, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Alexi. Okay, so I was kind of bad with how I found my REUs because I didn't really sit down and like do research. I more so asked my mentors and other grad students and even under, other undergrads. I was just sort of like, so where do you think I should apply? Like, you know, tell me about programs that you like. Um, and then I also found a couple of them at SOCNOS, which was a conference that I attended a couple months before. So that's how I selected them. Um, I applied, okay, so I was planning to apply for 13 because I'm kind of crazy. Um, I only applied for nine because after nine, I got my first acceptance. Um, so I ended up getting accepted to five, rejected from one, and then three either canceled or didn't get back to me because of the pandemic, so they're lost. But anyways, um, so the application process was pretty much just a personal statement. And then in there, like Thelma said, I included a part where it's like, this is why I want to be in your program. This is why you should take me to your program, um, stuff like that. And unofficial transcripts, like other just things about yourself, like your address, your name, all that. Um, I asked my research mentor for a letter of recommendation. And I also asked my club advisor instead of another like research professor or class professor because I felt like she knew me the best. Um, so I figured that that would come across really well in a letter of recommendation. Now, let's take a quick pause for questions before we, the next one I think I would like you to talk about a typical, what was it like? What do you do in summer research? But I wanna see if there are any questions from the audience. Maybe not, that's okay. I just always wanna give the opportunity. If one pops up, you can always type your name in the chat and say, I have a question if you'd like to ask it instead of type it in the chat, cause that always, at least we know to ask you. So at this time I really like, what was it? What do you do all day? Did they just like, did they just throw you in? I'm like, here, boil some rats. No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't even know. I That just came in my head. You don't boil rats in summer research. I just wanna let you know that. Um, I cook them at home. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so with that, um, let's start with, I'm going to go in the middle, Ryan, <laughs> I tricked you. <laughs> Not surprising, but, um, what a typical day was like for in the REU. So, um, the R my REU this past summer was kind of interesting because they, uh, canceled it and they turned into a professional development program. So we met around twice a week on Wednesday and, um, Saturday for about an hour and a half to do a number of things. We worked on um, getting ready for the NSF GRFP. So writing the, figuring out what research question we wanted to answer and propose and working on our personal statements. We had things like uh, journal clubs, uh, reading, meeting, um, and then meeting the the uh, person who wrote that paper to kind of ask questions about like what their process is like, things like that. Um, so yeah, that was kind of like my experience at University of Michigan. I also did, um, once Michigan kind of got canceled, my lab applied me for the summer undergraduate research program at San Diego State. So I just kind of ended up doing what I typically did in lab, just kind of at home. So a lot of coding, a lot of, um, um, data analysis, looking at and like graph making just to find out what the results of my project was. And as each of you talk about a typical day, at the end of it, like, was there a paper at the end of your summer? Oh, I see it's close to 145. I better stop talking so much and let some of you guys go on with it. I would like to ask Nicole, since I know you did your first one at the end of your freshman year, was can you talk about what a typical day would like was for you? Yeah, so I think, well, I think so also applies to my internship, but I was just like absorbing literally everything that was thrown at me because I didn't have much experience like either or in internships, which is industry stuff or in research. I'd never done any research related other than like a chem lab. And it was different since I was like in a structural engineering lab. So I was just kind of learning something new and every day, just kind of mostly talking to um, the grad student that was kind of in charge of my project and he would to assign me different tasks every day and kind of we would talk through like what this meant or like how it would help for their um, projects and stuff like that and kind of similar to my uh, industry experience as well my internship 
I would also, it was virtual that year, so it was kind of just a lot of typing, of asking questions and, and video chats, but um, it was also just kind of getting tasks every day and, and just asking questions, ask questions if you don't know what you're doing, because you don't want to look bad if, if later you have to do like presentations. I know for my RU, we had to present multiple times to um, the faculty in charge. So if you don't want to get up there and not know what you're talking about, so ask questions. Um, It'll definitely help you out, help you understand um, what you're studying a bit more. So. Thank you. And then I'll leave it to Lexi, Kara, and Chris to say, um, since you guys came to this last summer with research experience, what was there more expected of you? Was your day different? And um, I don't know if one of you wants to go first. Uh, yeah, I, I can go I first. Oh, Lexi, oh. Kara, then Chris, how about that? Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I have all, or at least before my summer research experience, I only had experimental research skills. Um, so I was working with cells and protein and pipette and things like that. And then my summer research experience was all computational. So they didn't expect a single thing from me. Well, they expected things from me, but I didn't have to come in with any like pre-existing knowledge because they knew that I was undertaking that experience with no computational skills. Um, so that was fine. Did you want me to answer the other questions too, or just? Kind of what your typical day. So since you were virtual, okay. I don't know, because next, this summer may still be virtual and it may be in person. Yeah, very good point. Um, so yeah, my experience was virtual. So a typical day was about eight hours of work or activities. So I would meet with my graduate student almost every day over Zoom for like 30 minutes just to check in. Um, and then we also had like three to four hours of workshops every Monday. We had seminars on Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, and we also had fun things. Like we had a talent show, which Vinny and I actually won a prize in. Um, we had a movie night, we had socials. So they tried really hard to get us like connected and to get us to be friends, even though we were all, all over the country. Um, so that was kind of cool. I did present at the end. We had a two day research symposium um, which was kind of like a mini SRS. Um, and that was just like a 12 minute presentation and three minutes for questions at the end. Yeah, so I um, I think one of the reasons I ended up being selected for the research program that I was, was because I had a lot of applicable skills to that project. Um, my previous research was fairly, uh, it was a different topic, but very similar techniques that we were gonna be using. Uh, and luckily I'd been doing computational research already. And so that made that transition much easier probably than Lexi had, because <laughs> um, I already had the background for it. Um, my typical day looked like, uh, so my lab was on the East Coast. So it was a lot of waking up early for meetings. Um, and I would get up, I'd get working, get some stuff done. And then around noon, I would have a meeting with my mentor every single day. And he was incredible. And I also worked fairly closely with two postdocs. And that was the majority of my lab. So it was a smaller group for sure. Um, and we also had some like personal development and professional development events a couple of times a week. And then again, they tried to help us be friends by hosting social events which is interesting when everyone is at different time zones and all over the country. But uh, my, pre my summer culminated in um, a poster and a presentation. So similar to the like SDSU, uh, URS or SRS presentations. And Chris, if you had anything to add about the typical day, if not, I see, I know we have a couple other questions in there, but go ahead, Chris, I'll let you before. I think we have what? a few 10, nine, 10 minutes left. Yep. Um, so just quickly for my NYU experience, it was, I was in the lab kind of a full like regular day, eight hours. And then I'd kind of just travel. But that was kind of one of the reasons why I applied to NYU. I was like, hey, it's a cool place to, to actually experience and then also get paid to do it. Um, and kind of echoing what Lexi said, I went into a mechanical engineering, but I was working at a chemical engineering lab and I was like, this is crazy. I don't know. Um, but like what a lot of the panelists said, like Nicole also said, um, I just started to soak in as much information as I could and try to catch up or just really like dive into this uh, material. And that's something that you really want to kind of enter these programs with of that, that vigor of like, hey, 
I might not know it, but I'm gonna ask a lot of questions and I'm gonna engage with a lot of people. And through that, you start to show your own work ethic and you also start to kind of have a passion or a, a better, better knowledge of what you're messing with and what you're studying. Moving to my second experience uh, for an online uh, program, it was, it was a Penn State slash Norfolk State University like crash course summer program. It was, it was interesting. It was three weeks where we were trained uh, to work in a nanofabrication lab. So like clean room, all suited up, understand how to actually make these electrical and mechanical systems. And um, kind of taking my knowledge that I had learned at NYU, I was able to kind of at least be more versed in what was happening. But still I was like, okay, there's a lot that I don't know. Who can I pick at? Whose brain can I pick at? And whose question, like who can answer my questions and what questions can I build up? Um, I think that's something that resonates with, with a lot of these programs is you kind of have this, this time where one, you're getting paid pretty nice, but you also end up in a position that you're communicating with a lot of good people who can do a lot of cool things. Um, my professor who I had my experience at NYU has done so much for me. Um, he's connected me with so many schools and so many cool opportunities. And it's because kind of, I took that step of like everyone's saying, try to absorb and try to engage as much as you can. I think that answers it. Before mm -hmm. we, I think we're gonna ask questions of the, if there's any in the audience or in the chat, but I did wanna ask the permission of the panel. Can we share your at sdsu.edu email when Vinny sends out the, and we'll have your name and major so they remember who you are. All right, cool. All right, all right. And Vinny, they, they move along, I don't. Oh, uh, just a couple of final announcements. Okay, sure. Yeah, if that's okay. So there's a little survey that I linked down below if everyone could fill that out. And um, I will be sending out the panelists, um, their information, their SDSU email, um, what program that they did and what major they are if you want to contact them, if that's okay with you panelists. And um, also recording of the Zoom session. Um, feel free to stop by our center. Um, I'm, you know, we're open Monday through Friday. Um, it's on our website, which I will also link in the email. Uh, we're open 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And so if you have any questions about summer applications or you just want someone to talk to, like I'm a biochemistry major and I also did summer research and we have other people in the center who've done the same thing with a different field, I am more than happy to connect you or you can also talk to Thelma. She kindly put email down. And so, yeah, feel free to reach out. And if you have any other questions, you can also contact me through my SCSU email. Someone have a burning question they wanted to ask like verbally because this chat is just flying by i don't know i don't know i can't follow it i'm old Anybody? <laughs> i know people are writing full paragraphs i can't even keep up <laughs> i do want to if you start your personal statement utilize the writing center they have uh people there who also look at personal statements it's just not work, school work you can use the university writing center virtual and have someone look at your personal statement um, that's a great help if you're an eop um, we offer workshops through the CASA on personal statements every once in a while. I know the Success Center does them. There's lots of workshops being offered, so definitely utilize those. Um, I don't. I'm curious why you picked the ones you did if you were accepted to multiple. That's a great question. It was the only one that wasn't canceled. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> because of the pandemic. <laughs> Actually, fun fact, I accepted another one, it got canceled, and then I begged Stanford to let me in, they did it. Uh, for me, I spoke to my mentors. I spoke to the people who had written me letters and knew me as a student, and uh, like they're both incredible programs, but one of them, the professor knew the professor working on the project. He said, oh, that's going to have a much more engineering leaning, this one's going to have much more this leaning, despite them being described very similarly. So being able to talk to someone who knew the people leading it and who knew the area better than I did. I kind of chose the schools that I was most excited about. <laughs> yeah, University of Michigan interested me the most. That's a great point. So if there's a school you're really interested in, you think for graduate school or medical school or dental school or public health or something, Google that school and more, more likely than not, they have a summer program. There's a lot of them across the country for sure. Other questions? Let me see. Oh, wonderful, thank yous. I know we'll stay on here for a little while in case you just wanna 
not say it in front of everybody. I don't know. Or I will. I don't know if the students have class uh -huh. or something. Yeah, well, I am going to end the recording right now, but I will open up the stream if anyone wants to stick around and ask your panelists, you know, questions one on one. A great round of applause. Where's my little applause? Yay.